Right, Worthful Allen. The year you were Grand Master, what was the biggest highlight of that year for you? In my year, 1991, I think one of the highlights of the year was the open house program, where we had an open house in Ever Lodge in the state of Texas on a Sunday afternoon, one in the spring and one in the fall. Uh, this wasn't an original idea. I stole it from the Grand Lodge of Wisconsin. I don't think there's very many new ideas anyway. But uh, a lot of the lodges kind of fought it and didn't think that it would pay off, didn't, it wouldn't work. People are going to, why don't we all open up, have an open house? We had over 90,000 non-Masons come through our lodges on those two Sunday afternoons in 1991. And a lot of people said, well, I've never been in a Masonic Lodge before. I've been by it for years. It's just great to see it. And there was lodges that received petitions that hadn't received a petition in 10 or 12, 15 years. And in my own lodge in Mount Pleasant, we picked up six petitions that one afternoon. And every one of them was friends of mine. And I often wondered why I didn't ask them before to, or talk to, to them about masonry. But this is what happens. We take it for granted. Uh, also, through the years, we've given the district deputies a speech to recite to the lodges. And most of them get up and read the speech from the Grand Master giving his message. But my year, I decided to make a video. And I made a video that I wasn't involved in, basically. But there was a lot of other things that was involved in the video. Uh, talking about what they could do and everything. And it went over like great. But no one else has decided to continue it. I guess it's too much trouble. But today with CDs, we should go back to that type of format. Very good idea. Uh, the main thing that I think today in masonry that we should be doing is have more pride. Pride is something I think we've lost throughout our society. Uh, you know, you go to church. Very few people show up in the coat and tie anymore. Why? Well, I guess they're afraid they'll stand out. But when I was leaving the motel this morning, one of the young men working there in the motel says, you know, you sure look nice dressed up in a coat and tie. It makes you feel good. And I think it makes our lodge members feel good when they got a lodge that uh, looks nice. And, Dick, you know what we did with the Scottish Rite Temple in Dallas. When you take a building that's 100 years old and you decide to put four times as much into it remodeling as it costs to build, it, it is a difficult decision. Whether we go out and build a new building, but when you look at what it costs to new, build a new building, you can't do it for that. But we spent over $2 million refurbishing that building. But it is a showplace now of Dallas. We've had a lot of civic leaders come through there. Some of them have never been in the building before because we've had activities there that involved people of the city. Uh, and it's great. I think this is what we need in Masonry is some injection of enthusiasm. Uh, to get more people involved, let them know that we are not a secret organization like everybody talks about. Uh, we are an educational organization. We are a moral organization. And the people that belong are better people than the ones that do not belong. I'm not saying there's not a lot of good people out there that are not Masons, but I think we're a little bit cut above the rest of the people. What is one factor that will motivate people to become more active in an organization such as Masonry? Well, you know what the person likes to hear more than anything else is his name. He likes to see it in print. Don't care what you say about me, just spell my name correctly. <laughs> and it does make a difference. Because people go a long way just for it to be acknowledged a little bit, give them a little pat on the back. You know, there's only about 18 inches between a pat on the back and a kick in the rear end. <laughs> and all of it's like a pat on the back. 
What about the future of masonry? How do you perceive its outlook? I consider that all masonry has a big future in Texas or any place else in the world. Uh, for one thing, people like to be a part of something that's successful. And we're a successful organization. Uh, people want to talk too much about numbers. Numbers is not what is important. What is important is the quality of people and the caliber of people that we have in masonry. Uh, and it's the pride that people receive when they become a part of it. Now, I've been in masonry almost 60 years. I started my Masonic career back in 1949. And in 1950, I received my commandery degrees. And I remember then that everybody in the commandery that first night was dressed in a commander uniform with a chapeau. You go to a commander meeting now, maybe the degree team has on uniforms. Maybe they don't. And this is one thing that reason Scottish Rite is so successful, is we wear caps so everybody has a dress that they go by. In the Blue Lodge, we wear white aprons or officer's aprons. It's a, it's a badge of honor to be able to wear an officer's apron. It's a badge of honor to be able to wear a red cap in the Scottish Rite or a white cap. You know, these are the types of things that people want to work for. And people will work for an honor. I've been a salesman all my life and a sales manager, and I found out a long time ago that I could get a salesman to work harder for a reward than he would for money. The quickest way to get a salesman to succeed his quota is to offer something for his wife. She'll force him to get out and work. When he could work half that hard and buy the gift for her, and take life a little easier. But it's, it's amazing how people want to earn something. They work for a plaque on the wall. You see that every day in business. Masonic social events are important and a good thing for masonry. Any particular ones stand out for you? Well, one of the programs we had in Scottish Rite was a Bobby Barnes dinner. Uh, of course, Bobby Burns was a port lord of Scotland, a very outstanding mason. And we would have a Bobby Burns dinner on the night that, uh, of his birthday. And we'd have toast, serve scotch whiskey like Bobby liked. And we'd have large crowds out there. And it's people that weren't necessarily coming to have a shot of scotch, but just to celebrate somebody that was famous, like Bobby Burns. And we have a lot of people like that connected with masonry that we should be doing things for. We had the ice cream social on Sunday afternoons in the summer. And people would come down and sit there and eat ice cream and drink coffee and just reminisce and visit. Uh, one of the things about masonry that we don't talk enough about probably is fellowship. And we can have dinners, and if we don't even have a program, just let the people sit and talk. And they're happy. If you, because if you get somebody talking about themselves and about their kids to the neighbor, you know, this is what happened years ago in this country when they sat on the front porch and the swings and visited in neighborhoods. Well, now then we're doing this in our Masonic Lodges. I think that this is the type of thing that Masonry has a place for. Our ritual is very important to all of us, but ritual is not the most important part. The most important part is fellowship and having friends. You've been out of office for several years now. What roles in Masonry are you involved with today? Well, I serve on the, I have for almost 30 years on the Scottish Rite Hospital Board in Dallas. I'm an officer of the corporation over there. I've been vice president for the last 15 years. Scottish Rite is, hospital is one of our great charities. 
This year we will treat over 20,000 children at no cost to any of them. We take no insurance, no government money for treating children. We do take donations from other people. Our budget this year will be close to $100 million. Uh, we also have a wonderful dormitory in Austin, Texas, where we house 310 young ladies. Uh, we charge them for it, but we cover part of the cost, and they have a home environment where one night a week they have to dress for dinner, which their parents and truly enjoy putting them through. Uh, we have a waiting list right now if you want to get your daughter in the Scottish Rite dorm in Austin. We could probably get her in in 2009. Eight is already completely full. And I've served on the George Washington Masonic Foundation and building in Alexandria, Virginia, which is the only Masonic monument built in honor of a president. Uh, and just on various other small things in masonry, but uh, keep working at it. I enjoy it very much. You are a Texas Masonic representative to a foreign country. Can you tell us about that? I'm the Grand Representative from the United States from uh, in Texas to the Grand Lodge of England. And in fact, uh, in March, I'm going to the Grand Lodge of Ireland, going to the Grand Lodge of England, and to France. Seven days, I'm making three continents and three different Grand Lodges. Wow, <laughs> <laughs> Where are you going to slow down, Chris? I don't know. I guess when I get to be an old man. <laughs> uh, I always enjoyed working. Why not stay busy? If you stay on the couch, you're going to die. Things are always fun. The basic thing, I think, is not how physically busy you stay, but how act if you keep your mind. The next worst thing to an empty stomach is an empty mind. And when you stop and think about it, that's true. Keeping Masons active is what more lodges should strive to do. Would you agree? You know, it's the same thing whether it's a fraternity, a church, or any type of organization. If you let people get inactive, they tend to get away from it and they're looking for an excuse to come back. And when people quit stop going to the lodge, they don't want to come back because what well, somebody's going to say, well, where had you been here? When you get them back in, well, then they stay active. That applies to rotary clubs, lions clubs, anything you want to do. Give us a brief bio on yourself. I was born and raised in Mount Pleasant, Texas. I'm the fifth generation in that county. My ancestors go back to before... Texas was a republic in Titus County. Really? I finished high school there, went to college, taught school for three years, then went into service and served in the Army, in the Army headquarters in Heidelberg, Germany during the Korean War. I had good duty. The rest of the boys had bad duty in Korea, but I lucked out and got good duty. Came back and went to work as a salesman with Royal Typewriter Company, and which later merged with Litton Industries and became a national sales manager for Litton Industries Business Equipment Division, living in New York City. Quit that and started my own consulting firm in New York, working with other business equipment firms. And in 72, retired and came back to Texas. And Started another consulting firm there, which I closed up last year. <laughs> and uh, that's my bow. I'm married to, for the second time, my first wife died 10 years ago from a stroke. I married a girl, a lady that, and let's see, when was it? In 2000 that she and I had dated in 49. And we do went her different ways. She married and lost her spouse, and I lost mine, and we got back together again. 